Be sure to check out my store for the stuff I use and templates at a low cost, and get my everything pack so you can have everything in my store at a reduced cost, less than $20 if you tweet it out. What's up guys, Quasi here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this space scene, this nebula, whatever. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the title of this video is going to be, but um, this is sort of what we're going to be making. And uh, here's one example. This is all created from uh, just Photoshop stuff, except some of this like green uh, in here, which is a stock we're going to be using. Uh, but here's like another example. You can see here's the stock that we're going to be using already, like right here. Um, but yeah, so you can create like really sweet looking space stocks or space scenes, whatever you're really using for you using this for. Uh, you're able to create all this stuff from scratch, and it's really sweet. And some of the techniques used here are really helpful, and they will allow you to do other things as well. Um, so yeah, guys, let's get right into the tutorial. So first thing we're going to do is create a new file. I'm in a uh, CC 2017 by the way of Photoshop so some of my stuff some of my things might look different uh, we're gonna be using a 4000 by 2000 a, a picture plane and a resolution of 200 RGB color mode black background and let's go ahead and create that so let's double click on the background to unlock it and right away let's just command J on that black background to duplicate it and let's go to filter noise add noise and we're gonna go amount of 30% Gaussian monochromatic and the, this is how we're gonna be creating the uh, stars and then once we do that we want to have that layer selected we're gonna go ahead and just name it stars for now so we uh, so we know let's go to image adjustments levels and this first one here we just want to type in 150 and you probably won't see anything on the screen it will still look black but once you hit OK the stars will come back and we want to set that to screen and command J that layer to duplicate it command T and go up here and click this little link so that the height and width are linked and type 200 into one of them hit enter and that will just make some bigger stars and we'll get to this in a second but let's go ahead and create a new layer let's go get the brush tool and we want a soft brush at about 900 pixel size and we want to go ahead and select a color here so let's click here and the first color I'm going to be using is 005952 so it's this dark scion and we want to click OK and we're just going to create like a spot here here and then maybe over to the right and then let's go ahead and select another color and we're going to do 003663 okay and let's go kind of down the middle something like that and finally let's get another blue and let's do 002157 and let's kind of fill in some of these gaps here maybe uh, that's actually not too bad. Let's maybe do one like right there. There we go. So this is kind of going to be the color for our nebula or whatever you want to call it. But let's go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur so we can blur out this color. And we want to do about 300 pixels, something big so this color really blends and spreads out throughout the uh, picture plane. You can click OK. Now the next thing we want to do is go back to these stars and we want to go and create the layer mask on each one of these and then identify which one is the uh, closest stars, the one that the layer that we enhanced or uh, increase the size to 200% it should be this top one. So we want to select the layer mask, go to our brush tool and we're going to create a custom brush here. So I already have this saved but I will show you how to create it. So you want to go to this brush right here. It's like oil oil pastel large. It should say a 63 here. And you want to select that. Then come over here to your brush uh, like settings. And uh, if you don't have this, I believe you can find it window brush or F5. And we're going to uncheck dual brush. We want to go to brush tip, brush tip, brush tip shape. Uh, yours might be different. We also want to check shape dynamics and go to brush tip shape and we want to make the size 400 
the spacing about 80%. And then let's go to shape dynamics, size jitter, increase it all the way, angle jitter about 50. And that should be good. Now, uh, if you want to save this so you can use it later on, go ahead and uh, go to this button right here to create a new brush. And that will save it in your brush library. So let's close that. Let's make sure we have black selected as our foreground color. And we're on the layer with the bigger stars. And we kind of want to erase or uh, add black to erase the outside part. So the bigger stars are in the nebula because if you think about it, the nebula would be closer than most of those stars which are way far out in space. Uh, if you think about like the depth and things like that. So let's go ahead and go around the edges a bit. And you can of course uh, leave some gaps and also erase some gaps from the middle as well so it's not like uh, over saturated with stars in the middle so I'm just gonna kinda knock out the center and then kinda click around that's pretty good and then let's go ahead to the other stars and we can just kinda click around randomly uh, it doesn't really matter you can do whatever you can erase more in the middle if you want or uh, keep erasing some of the outside but we're gonna clean up the outside later on so you don't really have to and something like this so now we have a pretty good cluster of um, stars and things like that so we want to actually create the nebula that we're gonna be using so let's go and create a new layer Let's go up here and get the elliptical marquee tool. And we're going to create some sort of oval shape. So I'm going to go like maybe here and stretch out like so. And we're going to right click on that layer and go to feather and 45 pixels. Click OK. And then we want to go over here and make sure that these are black and white. So you can hit R on the keyboard. Actually, Command R. No. Oh. So you can hit D on the keyboard to make this black or white or just click the button to make it black and white. And then we want to go to filter, render, clouds, and you should get something like this. But uh, you want to go again to filter, uh, render, difference clouds. Then you want to go set to the layer mode to, what is it, color dodge. And you should get some cloudy effect like this. This obviously doesn't look like a nebula that much right now, so we can go ahead and do difference clouds again. And I've noticed that the second time you do it, usually you get more of a nebula look, but you can just do it as many times as you want to get something that you like. Um, this works fine for me, so I'm gonna press Command D to deselect. And then let's go ahead and go edit, transform, warp. I'm gonna zoom out a bit here. And I'm just going to stretch out these angles like so. Maybe do something like this. Decrease that a bit. Yeah. Out here. Out here. In. In. So I want to create a shape uh, with this nebula that goes like sort of a U shape. Uh, that's kind of my favorite. I think that looks the best. Obviously we can't get it fully with this warp, so we're just going to hit enter, this is pretty good. And go back to edit, and this time do puppet warp. And here I'm just going to go around and add points. I'm not sure if there's a better way to really do this, you can be more precise with your points I guess, but I just like to click around and then use what I just created. So let's go here and stretch these ones out. All right, this looks pretty good. Let's uh, let's hit enter on this, see how it looks. That's pretty nebula looking, looks all right. Um, you can obviously play around with this to get it as best as you want. Usually when you do that puppet warp and you stretch out these edges, you get a really nice look here on the outside, uh, which is uh, like my favorite part of this. Um, and now we wanna go ahead and create another new layer. Let's get that brush we were using before, that custom brush. And let's select a color of a dark spot in here because we want to kind of add a, a little bit to the depth. So this looks pretty dark. I'm going to select that color. I'm just going to add some bits of darkness. 
And now sometimes this will look a little odd. So you can see a couple of those that I added look out of place. So I'm going to delete a few of these, actually all of them, and kind of clean this up a bit. Maybe select a different color for this side because it's looking a bit off. All right, there we go. That adds a little bit of depth here. Um, if you get ones that look a little bit off, uh, this one looks a bit out of place down here. You can kind of see it. Uh, you can just grab the eraser tool and erase it real quick with a soft brush, um, whatever you like. Now let's go ahead and create another new layer. And this time let's get the brush and white. And let's use this custom brush we have again. And let's kind of go through our uh, nebula however way you want. I'm actually gonna correct this a little bit to do something like that. And let's set that to overlay. And let's bump down the opacity tad bit. But this way we have like our main little bit that goes through the galaxy and this really connects the whole thing and I think personally makes it look really nice. And now let's get some curves. So go down here to the half circle thing and get some curves. I don't, I don't know what to call that. Um, and select blue where it says RGB, select blue and bring this top point down. And that will kind of just make it a little more green and uh, kind of I think personally more galaxy looking colors create another new layer and this time we're just gonna get a standard soft brush and we can leave it at 400 get a uh, black and actually I'm gonna bump up the size a bit more to 1400 and go around the outsides to kind of clean that bit uh, clean that up a little bit so everything's kind of contained in our picture plane. There we go, that looks all right. Now let's get the stock I was telling you about, which is the only thing that is not done in Photoshop. It's this Nebula stock, and we're gonna drag this into our uh, file here and expand the size. Uh, something like that works. Doesn't have to be the whole thing. Hit enter, and let's set that to linear dodge. Add a layer mask. Get the brush tool, get black, go around the edges first, kind of get rid of them, and then kind of knock out parts you don't want. So I'm going to knock out the sides pretty heavily, and maybe even more there, and then knock out some bits in the middle, something like that. That just adds a little more color to the actual uh, nebula, because if you've ever seen these, these have a lot of color. Obviously, in this case, we don't want to add too much color. We don't want it to be too crazy or I personally don't, maybe you do, you can obviously then just add more colors or more of the stock. But I think this just makes it look even better with the little bit of like orange and green and things like that. And let's go ahead to the half circle thing again and get a color balance. Uh, press Alt and click on that layer at the bottom to make it a clipping mask or right click, right click clipping mask. And just bump up the scion or the color, the midtones to the scion a little bit and the green. And this will make it blend in a little better with the color palette we're using, but it still includes that reddish and yellow. Now, you notice in this one, uh, I changed the color to like a pinkish purple. So if you want to do something like that, all you need to do is go and add a hue and saturation. And you can play around with the hue to get different colors and things. You can also bump up the saturation and get more color um, or dull it down a little bit if you'd like. I'm just going to leave everything at zero. Uh, you can also colorize things by using like gradient maps, so get a gradient map, use hue. I haven't been able to find a gradient map that really works and gives good results, but you can see selecting different things will give you different colors and whatnot, and uh, some gradient maps obviously suck. But yeah guys, that's essentially it, uh, creating this nebula. You see it's really easy, uh, that didn't take me long at all, and you can use this like in so many different ways to create a bunch of different nebula effects but anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this video uh if you enjoyed it please leave a like at 100 likes i will include my own two or i'll, I'll include this guy um in the uh description below for you guys to download and use to check out the layers and whatever um but yeah guys thank you for watching this video be sure to subscribe for more tutorials follow me on twitter at quezzy and i'll see you next time peace